Hello, welcome to today's communion service from St. James in Fuerteventura. My name is Ruth and I'll be leading today's service. All the words that you need will be on the screen, my words in orange and yours in blue. You may wish to have some bread and wine or, or an alternative um, ready for use later in the service. And so on this third Sunday in Advent, I wonder how would Jesus approach Christmas? Our theme for today is joy. We have lit the candles of hope, remembering the hope which is ours in Christ, and of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. We wait for the day when once again we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. And we wait for the day when Jesus will come again and everlasting joy will be on each of us. We light this candle in joy. On this day, we remember the Spirit who breathes joy into our lives.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And now we're going to sing together this marvellous Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And as we come together in his presence, there may be things that have um, been part of this week that have disappointed you about yourself and have disappointed God. So let's come and let's say sorry in these words. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And the good news is that Jesus gave his life for us on the cross so that we can be forgiven. To all who are truly sorry and believe and trust in him, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our first reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 24 is brought to us by Tom Thompson. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading from Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55 is read by Graham Adji. It is Mary's song and it is the point at which Mary goes to visit Elizabeth to tell her of the future birth of Jesus Christ that she is carrying. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And as we consider all the marvellous things that God is and has done for us, let's sing this wonderful hymn, Tell Out My Soul.
And Penny is now going to speak to us about joy. The Magnificat is a song of confidence that yes, the world was about to turn. It's also our Saviour's song of promise that in Christ the world can turn. And it's our song of hope, but also of challenge. What does it mean for us, us people with privileges and securities? We are here to help each other live out the Christ born in our lives and hearts this Christmas tide. We are here to help each other hold on to that hope, turning hearts inside out and lives and worlds upside down, until God's dream of justice and peace is fulfilled here and now. Knowing who God is, Mary realised that she had nothing to fear. We too have nothing to fear. I was thinking of Mary's word on being told she was to be the mother of Christ. I read recently that apparently angels are no longer part of our cultural thinking. We don't expect to see angels anymore. We never expect or anticipate visitations from messengers of God. Let's imagine the scene. Here's Mary doing the washing up or preparing the evening meal when suddenly the angel Gabriel appears and says, Rejoice, highly favoured one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. Mary was highly favoured by God. She was honoured and being chosen by God. She was expectant. When God acted in her life, she wasn't taken back when he promised to change it, to make a difference. Mary was steeped in faith and then joy, hence the Magnificat. She knew the promises of God. She knew that one day the Messiah would come. And that is a quality which God calls on each one of us to have, to be servants of his, and that we also need to expect great things to happen. If there's a single word that describes what Christmas is all about, it's joy. J, Jesus first. O, others second. And Y, yourself third. Have you opened any Christmas presents yet? I wouldn't be surprised if you have because I know there's such a thing as an early Christmas present. You know, something someone gives you and says, you can open it now. Sometimes that happens because it's something you can use, like jewellery or clothing you can wear to a Christmas party, or a trip over your Christmas break. So you're asked to open that present early. This time, a couple of weeks away from Christmas Day, that being the case, we're also opening in the midst of waiting for Christmas. But God reveals gifts to us today that he wants us to open and use the gifts before Christ comes. Paul tells us in his letter to the Thessalonians in her first reading, Be joyful always. Pray continually. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. It's a bit of a to-do list, isn't it? But open the early Christmas gifts in Christ Jesus, the joy, the gift of prayer, the ability to give thanks in all circumstances, because that's our reality with God. It's what we have from him through Jesus. Let's take these gifts and use them while we wait to celebrate his coming. Remember that reason to rejoice always. Pray whenever and wherever about whatever. That's God's gift to you. Let's give thanks, whether we're with Paul in prison, being persecuted for our faith, or staring trouble in the face. In Christ, God has brought victory over sin and its consequences into our lives through faith. Take that victory and use these gifts in everyday life. Not because you have to, but because they're all yours to use for your benefit and help. God's presence and the harvest of joy it brings, the joy and gladness of our journey on the holy way, knowing we are travelling on God's road, and letting that fact direct our thoughts and actions every day. I wonder how many of us feel joyful at this moment. If we have no joy, there's a leak somewhere in our Christianity. 
And I believe Jesus also says to us, look around. See the good through the bad. It's not always easy, is it? Signs of love and joy are around us every day. The old adage, is a cup half full or half empty? Christians can and should be a people who are characterised by an overflowing, amazing, abundant joy. A joy that, as the Bible puts it, knows no limits and is beyond all, all explanations beyond all explanation. A joy that is based on our identity in God. A joy that flows from a deep source, not dependent on circumstances around us. Many people think of Christians as being miserable people, don't they? If abundant life means anything at all, it means a life of joy. There are so many things that rob us of our joy, aren't there? Circumstances can shake our faith. Especially at this time with the pandemic, people will discourage us and things can distract us from what God wants us to enjoy. He wants us to experience his abundant, overflowing joy and that actually involves a choice on our part. We need to show this joy in a grumpy world. The first insight to capture joy in these tough times is to remind ourselves that God reminds us we are only passing through. This world is not our home. Tough times make people either bitter or better. All of us leave behind things when we die. There's no forwarding address in heaven at which we can leave our inheritance. So what will we leave behind in this world? When we die, we leave behind the effect we've had on our world, on our loved ones, neighbours and friends. These are far more important than legacies we can leave behind, than money and property. For as we go through our journey of life, we continuously create a personal legacy, part of ourselves that will be lived in the hearts and minds of others. So what will ours be? Will it be a meaningful, joyful one? Are we carving our name on hearts, not tombstones? Let us live today the way we want to remember tomorrow. We're all born and we will all die. But it's the memories we leave behind that define us. And so then we live on in others. There are souls in this world who have the gift of finding joy everywhere and leaving it behind them when they go. Let our prayer be that we are one of those souls. We may be the only Christian someone meets in a day. We need to be joyful Christians, have deep rooted, inspired happiness. So may we all strive to plant a seed of joy in folk we meet this Advent time. Amen. Our prayers this week are led by Alison Ajee. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today in this season of Advent, help us to prepare for the coming celebration of your Son, Jesus Christ's birth to hear us today when we pray in faith for the needs of the church and of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray for your church today, gathering worldwide in churches small and large or online to praise you and to hear your word. We pray that our faith will deepen and the true meaning of your gospel may be shared in our churches, in our small groups and in our communities. At this time, when it isn't always easy to, or possible or safe to meet together for worship, we give you thanks for the people who work hard to make church services meetings available online. We pray for your blessing on all those who lead, preach and teach. We pray especially for Bob and Judy and for all those who work with them in the St. James's Chaplaincy team. We pray, Father, for all the churches here on Fuerteventura and we ask for increased unity between them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. 
Creator God, govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority, that they may act justly and honestly and according to your will. We pray that the Brexit negotiations go well and that the result is acceptable to all countries involved. We thank you, Lord, for the scientific knowledge that's enabled a vaccine to be found against COVID-19. And we pray for the people involved in distributing and administering it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we pray for our families and our loved ones as they prepare for a very different Christmas this year. Help us who know Jesus to set a loving example of a true Christmas spirit and what it really represents. May we shed the light of Christ wherever we live in this Advent season. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Merciful God, we lift before you those in hospital or ill at home at this time or struggling with depression or loneliness. Comfort and heal all who are suffering just now. And in a moment of silence, please bring before God those people on your hearts. And we include all those in our current prayer list here in the St. James Chaplaincy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we think of those who are in uh, mourning and we ask, Lord, that you comfort them and also the people who are remembering anniversaries of times of loss of a loved one at this time. Father God, we thank you for the gift of prayer and the knowledge that you are always there to listen and always surrounding us in your unbounding love. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, either in the version on the screen, in the one most familiar to you, or in your own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As part of the offering of yourself to God, you may wish to send a donation for the work of the chaplaincy across Puerto Ventura. Some of what we receive is given to support the Spanish Association Against Cancer and some to TIA Fund for International Relief and Development Work. Details for donations are on the website. And now we're going to sing again, Light of the World.
We give thanks in the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. All are welcome at Christ's table. Eat this and remember Jesus. Amen.
drink this and remember Jesus. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son whosoever believes will not perish they shall have And let's say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. Our notices, as ever, are on the website, but there are two that I particularly want to bring to your attention this week. 
The first is our carols and communion service on Sunday the 20th of December at six o'clock in Corlejo. And the second is the services on the 24th of December where we will have an all age carol service at two o'clock which, uh, which will then be repeated at four o'clock. There will be limited seating available. Come early, but the doors to the church will not be opened until 30 minutes before the service starts. Again, both of these services will also be available online. And the second notice relates to our continuing acts of love. Again, if you have any food or toiletries that you want to donate to the work of the mission, then bring your donations to church or alternatively drop them off at Casa Bob or request a pickup. And the other thing to note is that we are heading for Christmas and they would really appreciate gifts of toys for the children they support as well. Our midweek in-person fellowship groups um, continue in Coralejo, Caleta de Fust and El Catillo. So if you consult the website calendar for the details of times and venues for these and other meetings. And now we're going to sing our final hymn, Hills of the North Rejoice. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this and may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.